listing out. So <clears throat> when you look at DHIS 238.1, you're going to see a new app in the app menu. It's the line listing app. It looks like this. It'll probably become an icon that many of you are very familiar with. You can, of course, search by it too, and it'll show up. So I'm in the new line listing app now, and I'm going to point, just give you a quick tour of it. Not going into a lot of detail. Um, we have supporting documentation that goes into, you know, covers every click that's uh, that's here in the app. But just a quick overview. So you see this app looks very similar to our data visualizer application, and that's very much by design. So on the left side, we have our um, data item selection panel or dimensions panel. And this is obviously where you turn on the different data that you want to see. Then along the top, you see that we have now a columns. Um, we have a columns area and we also have a filter area. And this, so this is a dramatic improvement over the previous line listing app or sorry, the, the event reports application where you really weren't able to organize your columns very easily. So in this, you can see that I have all of these columns. These are all different data items that have turned on in the columns. And you can actually see that I can drag them around very easily. Let's see, if I move it around uh, and to change the order of my columns. Now the filter dimension is there in case you want to filter um, your line list by some uh, additional criteria. So let's just start a new one. I'll just give you a, I'll just make one for you here to highlight all the new functionality and the, and the, and the workflow of using the application. So the very first thing I have to do with this application is I have to define my input. I have two input options. I have event or enrollment. Event is so that you can see individual data, uh, event data from a tracker program stage or event program. The enrollment is to see data from multiple program stages in a single tracker program. Okay, so I'm going to check on enrollment. And then I can, and when I check on enrollment, you see that my, my domain dimensions and time dimensions are starting to update. But let's go in now and select our program dimensions. So first I can choose a program. I'm going to choose COVAC. So this is a, a COVID vaccination program. Um, and so I can, so when I, choose my program, I see now all data items available in this program. You see that this program has quite a lot of data items. I can, of course, search within the within uh, the all the data items. So that's that's program indicators, that's program attributes, that's data elements. So but I can search for something like name and you see the name comes up. So let's add family name. When I when I click on family name here, you see that what pops up is what we call our condition definition or condition selection box uh, or window. And here I'm able to add a condition. And what a condition is essentially a filtering criteria for the data that you wanna show. So I can click here, say no conditions are here, and I wanna add a condition. So because family name is defined as a text field, my conditions that are available to me are here. So exact, is not, contains, does not contain. And you'll see that we have is empty, stroke null, and is not empty, stroke not null. And you'll see that these are available for all different data types. Um, uh, no matter what you turn on, you'll have is empty, is not empty. I'm not gonna add anything now. I'm just gonna add it to columns so it's there. And then if I'll just go ahead and add given name as well. And then I can also, remove this search and let's say I want to add uh, just some data elements. So you see here, I can then go into my filtering and add specific data elements, program attributes, program indicators, categories or category options. So they're all there. I'm just gonna choose data elements and let's just come down and choose vaccine name. Here's all my different vaccine names. Very simple, I'm just gonna use the double arrow button to select all of those. And you see here at the top, I have another tab, and this is to define, to define my repeatable events. So in this tracker program, we have multiple repeating events um, for every time someone is being vaccinated um, or receiving a COVID vaccine. So I want to see the last two vaccines that they were given, okay? Again, this data is entered into the same program, it's just two different events, or entered, excuse me, entered into the same stage, it's just two different events. So I'm gonna click on my repeated events. 
And you see here that I can select my most, re most recent events or my oldest events. And you just simply put the number that you want. So I'm gonna say, I just want my most, my two most recent events. So I'll add this to columns as well. The last thing that I need to do is to define a time dimension. So we've, we in the, you know, we've been referring to DHIS2 time dimensions as periods for a long time. Um, and we're starting to move a little bit away from saying periods and starting just saying time dimensions because we have different types of time dimensions available to us in Tracker. So let's look, we have doses given, but that's not applicable to uh, the program enrollments. We have date of registration. So let's just turn on date of registration. Let's go to yearly. Now you'll see here that the period selector here is the same period selector that we have in, in, um, in our other applications, but we can also define a start and end dates as well. Let's just say this year. Let's add that to columns. And then let's just add a last update on. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, to add any additional criteria here. I just want to see what the last updated was. I don't really like this order, so I'm just going to move it around so that I have my last name first. I'm sorry, not my uh, family name first. Given name, last updated on. Let's just add date of registration, and then or unit, and then my data. Looks like I am not returning any data. That's fine. Let's just double check. I have everything. All right. Well, good news is I did this before, so I'm going to open. I'm just going to go to go back enrollment. All right. Now I'm going to remove. Vaccine name. I'm going to go to my repeatable events, add that to click update. It's going to take a second. So if I scroll over now, you'll see that I have multiple, I have the same data element coming from two different events here. So I have vaccine name vaccination, most recent, and then I have vaccine name vaccination most recent minus one. So this is the most recent vaccine they were given. This was the one before that. And so you can see that it's clear here in the column that I have the same data element coming from two different um, events that were captured in a repeatable stage. Okay. Now let's say I want to add an additional filter here. Let's say that I only want to add those um, see those trite entities, each row here representing a trite entity, of course. I only want to see those trite entities that have a cardiovascular disease. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to click on cardiovascular disease. I'm going to click on yes, and then click update. And now my line list is going to filter by just those that have cardiovascular disease. If I don't want to see that particular data element in my line list here, I can find um, cardiovascular disease. And I'm gonna drag it over to filter. So now it's the same line list, but I'm just filtering by all of those who have cardiovascular disease. Okay. You can see here that you can add a lot of columns. So you can make very long or very, uh, uh, large um, uh, line list, and you can simply expand your area to continue to add columns as you need. You can also filter by program status. So we have program status over here on the left side, so I can uh, filter by active, complete, or cancel. Uh, and I can choose on, I can turn on my created by or last updated by. When I click, when I click on created by, you'll actually see that um, this is not a filterable dimension, meaning I cannot search for an individual user and, and set that as the criteria to only see those line lists, or sorry, those trite entities that that user had created. We don't have that functionality yet. It's something that we're, we're exploring and trying to 
organized and how we, we would be able to achieve that, but it's not available in this release of this application. Or so I can add this to my columns as well. Uh, I can even add last updated by. Now, because this is a demo instance, it's not going to show any names here because um, this was just imported data, but had an actual user put this data in, you would see that username here in the created by or last updated by columns. What else? So hopefully you appreciated that we can turn on all of our different time dimensions. So in the previous event reports application, you only had one time dimension. Um, now you have all of the time dimensions that are applicable for the tracker program, uh, for the data that you're looking at, and you can turn all of them on. Uh, you only have to define one of them to which the would 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 be the org unit, or sorry, not the org unit, sorry, the, the time dimension in which the line list would then be created from. All right. Of course, you know, um, the options, just to kind of give you a um, quick overview, you can, you can change the size of the different, of the data that's being displayed. So display density, font size, you have options for that there. Download, you have all of your various different download options, plain text, uh, Excel, CSV, et cetera. Um, and your file option menu here is just the exact same as it is on the data visualizer application. So save, open, new. All right, so this is the first version of this application, and we will be making new versions of this application for the next several releases. Um, so we know there's a lot of functionality here that has been requested that is, well, there's a lot of requests that we have not completed yet. Um, and we feel like this is a very good start. This is um, a really, I think everyone appreciate this is a massive improvement from how people are making line lists currently in the uh, event reports application. but. Just to let you know that we're not done. We have a lot more to add here. Um, and you can take a look at dhis2.org backslash roadmap to see specifically what we have scheduled for this application in the next, uh, in the coming releases. All right. So um, if you have any questions or issues with this application, again, this is the first version. Um, we feel quite, we have done extensive testing on it. We feel quite confident in the stability and performance. Um, of course, you're deploying DHI, you, you know, you have many different ways in which you're using and deploying DHIS2, many different configurations that we are not able to test against. And uh, so we do highly encourage you to download the application, test it, um, and, and please do give us any feedback. One um, thing to point out here is that this application will not override your previous saved um, line list in the old event reports application. Um, meaning that if you you can open line lists that were saved in your, in the old event reports application here, but you have to save them by a new name. Um, and the reason is is that we don't want to override those previous line lists um, because this one has new functionality. Um, and so if you change the layout, change the look of it, you know, add something like repeatable events to it and save it by the same name, then it wouldn't be, you could not open it in the old event reports application. And that may be very detrimental to uh, some users that are still work, uh, working in that application. Uh, 